<clears throat> so AV, AI and AV. So as we just inter was just introduced, I'm Brian Dunan, the Director of Technical Sales here for the Americas. Um, for those that don't know much about me, just to give you a quick history, uh, we started our company at the at the tail end of 2019. Uh, as of today, we have over 13,000 customers globally, over 350,000 of our devices deployed across 90 countries, and most recently just collected seven Red Dot Awards to bring our mass total to 12. And really that is given out to uh, products in this industry around kind of the aesthetics and the design. So what you'll see from our devices is that they are very appealing uh, when they're placed within these meeting spaces. So just a quick timeline of our slides. One of the biggest things that we're known for is really our innovation. Um, and some of the ones across the top is really all of the devices that we've brought to market. Most, re most recently, our Neat Board Pro, which is on the far right. But down below is a lot of the key things that we talk about and a lot of the patented features that are driven by our AI and machine learning capabilities within our devices. So things like Neat Symmetry, and I'm going to talk about that here in a minute, as well as Neat Foundry and some of where we're going with kind of Pulse and App Hub, which really is going to enhance and extend the, the use cases of our neat devices within those meeting spaces. Something I wanted to bring up here, Frost and Sullivan just did their 2024 devices report, and we are very happy to announce that uh, we are now in the furthest right quadrant in the top, right there near Logitech and Cisco. And two of the things that, I've, that I just call out um, is, you know, two quotes that we've got. Need is an industry leader known for quality and simplicity. We'll talk about the simplicity piece in a second. But we're also, we've been on a rapid growth curve and became widely known for its high quality, easy to install and easy to use video conferencing endpoints. And at the crux of this is really, we want to simplify that end user experience. So if we think about kind of pre-pandemic and even in some cases now, as folks are still doing the return to office, on the left-hand side is really those meeting spaces, which are very complex and very, very clunky for end users to use, which usually results in them actually just picking up their laptop and going back into their desk and using the device that they're familiar with, the laptop. What we aim to deliver is what we see on the right-hand side, a very clean, aesthetic, appealing, uh, welcoming type room solution where we have our neat pad on the table and we have a neat bar up on the wall, uh, which really when folks walk into that and they see it's one touch device to interact with, they know it's going to be simple. When they come in on the left and there's a controller, there's a phone, there's a keyboard, there's a mouse, there's multiple devices on the wall, folks get very intimidated and they leave. So we really want to use our technology uh, to simplify that experience. Now, how we do that is we focus very much uh, on our customer challenges. And one of the first ones we wanted was a very simplified out of the box experience. We developed a very uh, elaborate out of the box experience, which guides our customers through taking a neat device out of the box, setting it up and getting a room up and running with everything you need that's in the box. An experience that very much rivals what we hear from our, from our customers that say, you know, if Apple and Sonos home theater system got together and built a video conferencing solution, it's neat. And that's something we're very, very proud of. But it extends beyond that to things where we do a lot of intelligence. And this is where we get into the AI components of our devices. We do things where we're using, we have IoT sensors that are built into our devices that we refer to as neat sense. It gives us that ability to do people count, temperature, humidity, air quality index. Um, and those are things that are reported to our management portal that facilities and maintenance and, and even IT admins want to know because they want to know how much is my room being used? How many people are in that room? It's not personally identifiable information, but it's data that helps make businesses or helps businesses make key decisions. We also have uh, symmetry and boundary, and we'll talk about that. But we take all of those experiences and we deploy those across our new device portfolio that's shown there in the middle. And those devices allow us to cover a wide range of spaces. So we talked about, and obviously the theme of this is like, use AI to do, to do more with less. So what do we do? The first thing that we did is really with our devices was the auto framing. The intelligence to be able to identify a human silhouette within a meeting space and frame and follow that individual, as well as then adjust as folks come into the meeting. Okay, and I'll demo that live here in just a second. 
Then the second thing was, well, that's great. And we were doing something that was really good because it eliminated the human touch to the neat pad to control the camera by making that intelligent decision on who we should follow within the meeting space. Then we thought as meeting participants and as meeting spaces get larger, the wider that camera pans out, the harder it is to see folks. So how do we take that and frame those folks and provide that equitable meeting experience where everyone within the meeting is properly shown to those that are remote? We want that meeting experience to be very inclusive. We want folks that are remote to feel like they're part of that meeting, that they're sitting in that meeting space and have a seat at the table. And then that extends to some of the features that we have from an audio perspective. And we like to refer to this as it's our feature, which is uh, voice isolation, but it also encompasses many things. It's deep noise suppression. Um, it's de-reverberation, meaning like in those rooms that we see where they're designed, it's all glass, granite tables, hard floors. You know, when somebody's talking, when you're remote, it sounds very hollow and very, very echoey. Right, like as if you were standing on the top of a mountain yelling out into a canyon and you could hear your echoes. Our audio algorithms, again, another component of some of that machine learning, we listen, learn, and adapt to what we're hearing in the room. And when we hear noises and we know it's not actually a part of the meeting, we can filter that out without muting or gating our devices. So the conversation can still continue to be very natural. Okay, so that's all great. Now let's show you some cool stuff. So if we're taking a look at this, and let me see if I can pull this up and I will try to spotlight myself real quick. Okay, so I'm in my home office. I have my neat bar here right in front of me. It's about four feet away. The thing you'll notice is that my device is gonna follow me. So when I talked about kind of that auto framing, it's looking for the head and shoulders, and it's gonna follow me as I move around here in this home office. So if I wanted to come over here and I wanted to show you something, this is App Hub, we'll talk about that in a minute. You'll see that that camera's following me and this is very appealing for those folks that are remote um, or in a meeting space because I don't have to touch a controller. Now we also have intelligence built in and if you're not paying attention, now's the time to pay attention, a little cameo appearance here. If I bring out a virtual colleague here and I bring out Mr. Adam Sandler, what you're gonna notice is that our camera is gonna be intelligent enough to now widen out that framing. Right? So it's now looking for the outermost shoulder of the meeting participant. So Adam there and myself. Now, as we move, if I move and I stand next to Adam, what you'll see is that camera will make that adjustment and it will frame Adam and I together. Not a bad experience, right? But it's two people in a meeting space. So what happens if I move Adam all the way to the corner here and I come back to the front of my desk? What you're going to see is that's going to pan out and we're going to get a lot of dead space. Right. And you can just imagine this in those larger meeting spaces where more and more people are joining it becomes very difficult to see everybody in that uh, technology. So, again, this is the group framing. Now, what I'm going to turn on is our patented feature that we call symmetry. So when I enable neat symmetry, what's great about this is we're going to do the individual auto frame. OK, and on our devices in that small to medium sized space, which we equate to about 10 to 12 people, that's going to frame and follow eight people. We have a larger device, which is our Neat Bar Pro, and that will allow us to do 15. And then we also have another camera, which is our center of the room camera, which is Neat Center, and that will actually allow us to go up to 24 individual frames. So you can see really how if you were remote, right, and you were participating in this meeting, it's very nice because as we're having this conversation, you can clearly see Adam. It's not focused just on me as the active speaker in the room it's gonna be able to show you everybody in the room. I personally like that very much because there's a lot of cues you can get in, in a meeting by watching the body language of those participants. Did a concept that I'm pitching land? Did they understand what I'm saying? Am I speaking too fast and I'm losing my audience? By leveraging neat symmetry in these larger rooms, you can see all the meeting participants and you can make decisions upon how you wanna move forward with your meeting content, okay? So that's the so that's the first part, and that's really the the big thing that we do from a video perspective. So let me unspotlight myself real quick, and I'm going to bring my screen back up. So 
So when I talked about the devices and we had kind of a relatively small picture, I just want to bring this up. So on the left-hand side, uh, something that's unique to our product portfolio, we do have two interactive touch displays. Now, the beauty of this is these are our touch displays in a 65 and a 50 inch uh, form factor. It's great for customers that are using Microsoft whiteboarding, they're using Zoom whiteboarding, or in a little bit, we'll talk about App Hub and our capability to kind of be the Apple TV of video conferencing where we can support multiple collaboration apps running on a board and be able to wirelessly bring that content into a Teams or Zoom meeting. On the right-hand side, here we've got our we've got our neat frame. This is going to be our personal video conferencing appliance. Uh, I use it every day for all my Microsoft Teams meeting. On the left hand side, I have another one on the right that I use for Zoom. And then we have various bars. So this is our original bar, our next gen bar gen or our bar gen two, which is what I'm on right now. And then our bar pro, which is the one targeted for those larger rooms. Now down here, something that's unique. This is our neat pad. It's a single device, but dual purpose. We can put those outside of the meeting room and use those for scheduling capabilities. So you could run that as a team scheduler, Zoom scheduler, or leverage any of the app partners that we have in our app hub to be able to use that for room booking. And then hanging from the ceiling is our neat center, and that is our 360 degree camera that I was kind of talking about. So how do we set this all up in, in, various, in various locations? So it's a great question. A lot of that is done through our management portal, which is Neat Pulse. Okay, so I'm going to jump in here just real quick. And what you're going to see is this is actually going to be my Neat Bar with my Neat Center and my Neat Pad that I actually have running here within my um, within my home office. So I'm going to come down here and I'm actually going to click Remote Control. And what you're going to see is it's going to pause for a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and click Allow. And now this is going to connect. So now I have remote access into my device right here. Now I can drive this setting. And one of the things I talked about at the beginning is, is that we had not only did we have neat symmetry, but we had framing boundary. Everybody asks, what is framing boundary? Well, that's our ability, again, to use AI within our devices so that we can configure a virtual width and depth of a meeting space. And we've extended that even more so recently with our neat center. Oh boy, this is what always happens on live demos. Bear with me. Let's get signed in here. And what you'll see is here's the home office of Mr. Brian Dunant. And what I can do is I've got Adam over here on the side, but where I'm standing here behind my desk, I can adjust this width so that and the depth of the meeting space. So that maybe if I was standing in the back of my home office, I don't want the camera at the front of the room to pick me up. So now if I stand here in front of the board, you'll notice that I have a red box around me. This is our camera realizing this human object is now standing outside of the zone or the boundary that I want to set. Okay. If I did want that to be able to capture me, all I have to do is just simply adjust this slider and be able to bring this in. Okay. And now if I stand here, we'll see that that bar is going to be able to see me. It knows that I'm actually within the boundary. So if I was to join the call from this bar, it's actually going to capture me and show me and I can leverage the symmetry feature. Now, one thing that's new, and I mentioned the neat center at the very end, that's the device that's actually sitting right here in front of me on the corner of my desk. This device has 16 microphones built into it. But in addition to that, it has a separate three camera module. To adjust that, and again, looking at AI, I can click on the Neat Center, and what you're gonna see is now it immediately switches, and it's showing me the view from Neat Center. Okay, so very unique in the way how this is actually working. Now, what does that look like when we're talking about an overall meeting space? Let me show you that. So with Neat Center, one of the great things that we've brought together is this really is gonna give us that ability to extend that audio and video to the center of the table while also improving some of that camera pickup of those meeting participants. This happened to be earlier this year in January in our Oslo, Norway office. Uh, our team was out there. And what you'll notice is that amongst all the water bottles on the table, we have a neat center sitting here. Now, if you are a remote participant in this meeting, 
it's a little bit hard to see several of the folks here at the back of the room. When we add Meet Center to this, this is the experience of what it looks like as a remote participant. Everyone around the table is captured. So again, leveraging our AI, we're looking at the front of the room camera at this point, but the minute the conversation in the meeting takes place and it transitions to folks talking across the table, what we see here then is now it will transition into this type of a view where everybody is individually framed and followed. And as a remote participant, I feel far more engaged in that, in that meeting. So this is, again, another way where we're leveraging AI. We've enhanced kind of how we frame and follow people within the meeting to extend beyond just the facial or the face and the human silhouette of head and shoulders to now also looking at eyes and nose and making an intelligent camera distinction. As the majority of the room is looking across the table, we will switch and capture everybody from the center. When we transition and look back to the front of the room, our camera is going to intelligently make that decision to now frame everyone from the front of the room camera. Now, one last thing that I want to leave you leave leave everyone with is kind of where we're going as a company. So, one of the great things that we have is we have great video devices. We're certified for Microsoft Teams. We're certified with with Zoom, but we get this request from a lot of customers. Hey, you have great technology, great AI. How do we leverage more applications running on your devices? Well, from within Neat Pulse and what you see behind me is I've now turned my board that would be a interactive touch display for Teams or Zoom into an App Hub device where I have multiple applications. And the beauty of this is right from here, I can bring up AccuWeather, for example, and I can interact with these applications right here on my board. And I can see what's going on with the weather. Maybe I wanted to swipe back and I want to go check out something on Google Maps. I want to see where's Brian located. I can now use these applications on this board to drive this conversation. And then when I want, I can wirelessly share that content into our meetings. And the beauty of all of this is this is all built upon Neat Pulse, which is our management platform. We've opened up APIs so that our customers and our partners who want to be able to connect and extract any of that data can do so by leveraging it. And really, the end of this story is, again, I've mentioned that we're certified for Microsoft and Zoom. We have capabilities through Neat Pulse and our App Hub application to not only manage, deploy, and remotely control our devices, but to be able to deploy these App Hub applications on there, as well as all of our devices have the Neat Sense data built into it with our environmental sensors, which are really kind of our IoT sensors. So I know we're coming up on time, so I do want to stop sharing. I'm going to pop back over here and open it up in case there are any questions anybody might have.